three things for me would change all that I've talked about tonight and make it impossible and would turn this prison into a paradise. It doesn't take one new political ism, not one smoke-filled room, not one terrorist freedom fighting organization, what a contradiction in terms, to change this world to a paradise. It just takes each of us to be who we really are and to express that uniqueness. It needs us to get a cough and step out of this nonsense. Those three things are to respect our own right to be unique and to express that uniqueness. Crucially, to respect everyone else's right to be unique and express their uniqueness. And thirdly, that no one ever seeks to impose what they believe on anyone else. At that point, this, we'd have a great explosion of human potential being unleashed from the prison of fear where it's spent so long. But because no one seeks to impose what they believe on anyone else, free will is not denied. Once we respect our own right to be unique, we cease to be a slave to impose thought and behavior. Once we respect everyone else's right to be unique, we cease to be a police force of the hassle-free zone and all the other slaves. And if we don't seek to impose what we believe in everyone else, no one's free will is denied. And what a difference that would make. If you take the symbology again of the herd of sheep. Hundreds of sheep across that hillside. Farmer arrives and the pickup truck gets out, stands there on the stick, wagging the uh, eyelids. One or two or three of the sheep start to walk towards him. But now, the sheep mentality is very different. The other sheep are not following the one in front. They're celebrating their uniqueness, they're following their heart. They're expressing who they really are. So they're saying, that's interesting, old Fred and Ethel sheep going over to that bloke on the stick, that's interesting. Do you know they do that every day at the same time? Very strange. But me, no, my heart, this is right for me. I'm going over here, I'm told it's ever so good, you know, there's a lot to learn over there, a lot to experience, that's where I'm going. And the other sheep says, well, that's good, I'll have a word with you later, see what went on. But I'm going there, and I'm going there. What on earth does the farmer do? Because now it is mayhem from his point of view. Because the bar bar mentality has disappeared. And all the other sheep are saying, you have every right to go over there. As long as you don't interfere with me, that's great. Same with you, same with you. So, the farmer might at that point, symbolic of this global clique, he might then fall back on Old Faithful. We'll frighten them to death. Get them flipping sheepdogs out. Row, 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 row. And now, the same sheep that are expressing their uniqueness, because they're now in their own power, and they know that they are infinite in their power, because there are no ordinary men and women in the street, just extraordinary people, because they're in their power, they realize that fear is their creation. And fear may be stimulated out there, but we choose whether to fear or not. Nobody else. It's just a choice. Everything's just a choice. So, it's, excuse me, go and have a bowl of water or some dog food or something, on your way, not interested, not going to be frightened, into conforming to what you say I should be. All that's happened in that example is that the sheep have let go of fear. They have let go of fearing being what they are unique. And the whole situation has changed. And if you bring that into the human experience, everything that I've talked about tonight becomes impossible. Once we express our uniqueness and stop condemning everybody else for expressing their uniqueness because it differs from what we think they should be doing. And for me, we are the front of the snowplow generations here. There is a, a global awakening going on that's changing the nature of people's perceptions of life. You know, when I, when I, when I 
look at people, I see them standing symbolically in an eggshell. Inside the eggshell is that very narrow area of our consciousness that we actually operate on in this three-dimensional world. And that very narrow area, first gear as I call it, is a doddle to manipulate by messages hitting us through the eyes and the ears constantly. Outside of the eggshell is our multidimensional consciousness, not some other external entity, our own multidimensional eye going on into infinity. An infinity of love, understanding, wisdom, knowledge. Because you know, people say, you have to seek enlightenment. I don't agree with that. Enlightenment's never gone away. Enlightenment is sharing exactly the same space as ignorance. It's just on a different vibration, that's all. What I feel, my view anyway, we need to do is not seek enlightenment but remove the barriers that are keeping enlightenment out and that is the eggshell an eggshell made up of fear guilt resentment lack of self-esteem i can't limited imagination of ourselves fear and when that starts to crack and it's cracking for more and more people multi-dimensional self starts to get access to reconnect with first gear self and at that point we start to perceive ourselves and life very different symbolically I feel that what's happening is there are vibratory changes going on around the planet as a natural course of human evolution which are cracking this eggshell this low vibrational energy that is our prison and so the light if you want to call it that the multi-dimensional self the infinite self is starting to get in and reconnect with this self. Suddenly, and I, God, I get two or three thousand letters a year now from people of all walks of life, increasingly from around the world, and the same experience is being experienced by all these different people. And that is, they're saying, I'm seeing myself in the world very differently. Why haven't I seen it before? It's so obvious. Because now the eggshell's cracking. And it's not first gear that's making the perception process in this world it's multi-dimensional self. We're becoming whole again. We're becoming what we really are, but have forgotten we are. The front of the snowplow generations are taking from our parents and grandparents, not because they're bad people, because they're just passing on their programming, we all do, which are basically about run with the, run with the herd, don't cause trouble, keep your head down, and as the Japanese uh, have a saying, don't be the nail that stands out above the rest because that's the first one to get hit. Love that one. And we're passing on to our, not just our children, but to ourselves, because this is a really here and now thing, thought patterns that say, you be you, whatever you is, and respect everyone else's right to be them. And the people between that and that are our generations. If we can let go of our own fear, we can remove fear from the world. Because the world is merely the sum total of human imagination of ourselves. When we change our imagination of ourselves, what we call the world dramatically changes. The world is just a second by second physical replica of the human mass imagination of ourselves. When we let go of our sense of limitation, our sense of fear, our sense of I can't, the world ceases to be a prison because we have created it. There's a, a wonderful uh, singer in this country, a German called Gila, who, um, it's a lovely song, which goes, we are the power in everyone. We are the dance of the moon and the sun. We are the hope that will never hide. We are the turning of the tide. If we can turn the tide within ourselves, from freedom or to freedom from fear then we turn that tide outwardly in the planet and all it is like everything else is a choice a choice between fear and love that's all it is we can choose to be frightened we can choose to hate it's a choice or we can choose not to fear and we can choose to love not love on the basis of I love you if I fancy you darling but I love you because you exist 
I love you whatever. I love you without condition. And if we want to change the world, it has to start with self. Fear, anger, hatred, condemnation, dictating what other people should be. That's the world we got. That's the prison. But paradise is waiting. It's a thought, an attitude away. That's all it is, a choice away. Love. If we love each other and love the world, our lives are fundamentally changed and the world is fundamentally changed. And we are the generations, strange as it may seem when you survey the world today, we are the generations I passionately believe who are going to love the world into the paradise it really should be and was always designed to be. Changing the world is not something in the future anymore. I hope it will be better for the kids. It's here and now. We're going to see it happen. Another song, the chorus of which I'll finish with. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge, don't you think it's time? More and more people across this planet are screaming yes to that question. And we are the generations who are gonna love the world to a paradise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Hola, 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 hola.